Hey, man, let's, um, I guess, introduce ourselves. I'll, I'll let you go first. Cool. Okay, pressure's on. Um, I am Eric Winklespecht, uh, a software engineer. I am uh, on the learning journey, uh, self-taught for, I don't know, some are getting close to a year at this point, I guess. Uh, I left an 11-year career at a global uh, IT solutions provider, spent a number of years there doing various managerial and senior managerial level positions, did a lot of uh, a lot of enhancements, a lot of work to improve efficiencies at different processes that the teams were doing. Eventually, I spent a lot of time in inside sales in the first number of years there, and towards the end of that, run i was feeling very stagnant and i spoke to a director and i was like hey what else can i do how else can i grow here he suggested expanding out into some other positions i was eventually approached by one of the vps that worked there and he asked me to move over to the warehouse department i was really good with like the systems and i knew how the whole company connected to it and how all the departments kind of work with everything and he was like oh we're gonna switch over to a new version of of the system that we use and we want you to lead that project and then when I eventually signed the offer letter, they were also like, oh, yeah, we also want you to build a training department for us. Good luck. So went into some random responsibilities there. Uh, did a lot of work I was very proud of. Still, again, continuing the work of working out new systems, working out new processes, and making jobs better. Very proud of the stuff I did. But towards the end of my career, you know, I can give a number of reasons, but it boiled down to I wasn't happy doing the work I was doing anymore. Really loved doing the managerial thing. Really loved being a mentor. Really loved working with people and making an impact, but I didn't really connect to the vision of the company or what, what they seem to be all about. So made the hard decision to leave. Thankfully had been extremely financially responsible with my savings and had lived with a roommate for a number of years. So had uh, what was supposed to be house down payment money that turned into uh, career change money and self-investment, right? So I have been a, a full-time student of the craft of software engineering since I guess around March or April of 2022, just did some self-study through some bootcamp style courses on Udemy and eventually just went the route of building as much as I could and learning as much as I could. And now networking as much as I can and connecting with awesome folks like yourself. So let's hear about you. Awesome. Well, I am Matt Ehrlich. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn as Matt Ehrlich. And I used to be a park ranger. I'm a nature lover and love spending time outdoors. And I quit my job last year in August um, to pursue my uh, sort of dream of becoming a software engineer full time. And uh, since then, I've been studying a lot and um, just being very vocal and putting myself out there, trying to build in public. So I know you mentioned that um, sort of like the build up to, to what to you leaving your, your job. Um, mm -hmm. but what was that process like for you leaving the job? Oh yeah. Oh boy. It was tough, man. I, um, you know, spending 11 years in one company, you get to know the people so well. And there were so many good people that I worked with who were like, just so jazzed to do whatever they were doing and enjoyed what I did for them and felt really good. But when it came time to make a decision to leave, like, you know, you're, you're like, this is who I am, right? This is, this is the job I've been doing or various versions of myself of, of this job for over a decade. What do I do and how do I exit? Um, you know, unfortunately in the time it was very emotionally and mentally draining. I, I had gotten to the point where I it was just like, I do not connect with what I'm doing. And I, I had so many challenges there for the wrong reasons, a lot of political things going on, directions of the company, where when I made the choice, I almost felt like it was that or I just wouldn't be able to continue at all anyway. So I kind of felt like I didn't have a choice anymore. I actually had uh, interviewed for a couple of positions outside of that company before I decided to leave, um, doing the same kind of work, but I wasn't super interested in it. And then I actually looked inside the company saying like, okay, maybe if I go to another department, things will be different, a different perspective. And I went and I got another manager job of a different team I had never managed before. And that was 
awesome and a, and a you know really great opportunity um was managing the apple team we had partnership with apple but once i got there and i was just like it's kind of the same feeling and it just wasn't the right thing for me to be doing anymore so uh it was definitely emotional you know you you work with the same core of people for over a decade and you get to know who they are and they know who you are and you leave that place and you're like nobody's gonna care who i really am outside of this unless i make the effort to show somebody and like it's a big question mark of like where do i go what do i do right i i didn't leave with a plan of like okay i'm gonna study software engineering and then i have a job lined up in three months like none of that you know so it was just like i'm gonna take a risk here and maybe it'll pay off and i think it's worth the investment in myself and it's worth it's worth taking time to really be an active participant in what your life is. You know, I, I enjoy your story too, because you're doing the same thing where you're like, I didn't want to be this specific person for the rest of my life. I didn't want to do this specific thing. So now I need to just actively work on what I want to do and find my way there versus just passively taking an opportunity that might come in your way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, leaving uh, is difficult. And we have some similarities with um, kind of like our past and our, our lead leading up to trying to become uh, an employed software engineer. Mm -hmm. I, um, I was a park ranger in New York City for about three and a half years. Um, great job. I loved what I did. But I kind of I kind of reached like my maximum potential at that position and um there wasn't a whole lot of room for growth or or improvement and also i really just wanted to leave new york city um mm -hmm. the crowds were getting to me traffic is is crazy over there so i applied for a bunch of positions um all around the country and um position here in north carolina got back to me and so my wife and i packed up all of our things and moved to north carolina where i was another park ranger um and I quickly realized once I got here that this job was was not for me. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't really in in the best uh, situation, and I kind of just lost my passion for for being a park ranger. So actually, one day uh, while I was going through um, park ranger training, I was watching TV with my wife, and there was this woman on on the TV. And it was a news story and she was talking about how she joined this full stack program for a mm -hmm. company called Goodwill and it completely changed her life and it allowed her to get a new job. So I was like, oh, wow, what's full stack? Oh, I wonder what that mm -hmm. is. So I looked it up. Eventually that led me to Code Academy, where I started learning um, on their front end path. And I was just like hooked from like the first day I was like, whoa, I could type some words here and they appear on my screen. Mm -hmm. um so that started in in march and uh from march to august i was just like hammering away at like courses and and learning mm -hmm. and eventually like you did i'm i'm pretty financially responsible and i saved up like a bunch of money and i decided you know what i'm just i'm not going to do this job anymore i don't want to do it for the rest of my life i i need growth i need to continuously learn and improve myself so I just left to uh, become a software engineer, and I've been doing that since uh, since August. Mm -hmm. So um, it's been a great it's been a great process so far. So what has what's the learning process been like for you, like from day one where you first started to learn code and until now? Yeah. So day one was really after I left my job, I actually signed up for a course through Coursera because like Google has a learning program where they provide like free certificates like sponsored by Google and they have like their training program. And I did one that was like data analytics because I wasn't sure what I was going to do. And I knew I wanted to do something with code and there's some coding and data analytics, right? And I went through the course and I got the certificate. And I, at the end of it, I was like, I hate this. I did similar work at my job with analyzing data and making decisions. And it wasn't as intensive as that, but I was just like, it's not the right fit for me. So then I pivoted and went into coding and I had some experience with coding um, back when I first went to college after I graduated high school. I graduated high school in 2006 and I went to community college right after that and I started in computer science and I had my first semester, had a really fun coding class, was super into it. And then my second semester, I did not connect with my professor at all. 
Uh, it was very challenging to learn the material, and I just became so disinterested in it. And at the time, I was also getting into physical fitness. So I was just like, I was working as a personal trainer, and I was like, I can just kind of pivot and do exercise science and physiology. So I ended up doing that, thinking I would just do personal training long term. Uh, there was some financial troubles in the world around that time too. And my paycheck relied on everyone else's. So I went back to college for business. And then, um, so fast forward again to me actually diving into code, you know, think, thinking like, okay, I can get into code. I knew some about it. I had dabbled a little bit in, you know, like free code camp stuff um, online before I left my job. And I understood like building stuff is where I'm really at, where I'm going to really have the most fun solving problems that way. Getting into learning was weird. I actually spoke to a boot camp and was in the process of signing up for a boot camp. And I was at the stage where I was just like, pick a start date and start the process and give us all your money. But I didn't really want to drop the 13K for a boot camp. Uh, you know, I was just like, I could, but this just seems like a lot of money and a big investment. So I ended up looking up like, what can I just do online? I found the Udemy stuff and went through that, right? The Udemy stuff was cool because it kind of matched up mostly with what the curriculum was at the boot camp I was talking to. So I kind of had like a general outline of like, okay, this seems like the right stuff. I didn't know really anything about what I was getting into when it comes to like learn full stack. Um, so I did two different Udemy courses because the first one was the... Um, Cult Steel uh, Udemy course, which is, you know, real popular everywhere you look. And like the dude's super chill. His lessons are cool, but I didn't really feel like I got enough out of it that I fully understood what I was doing. I ended up doing the Angela Yu course, which is another like super popular one um, and got a lot more out of that course. I think I, I like the structure of it. The, the practice uh, segments were a lot better. Um, just the structure of it and making sure everything was on point. Right. The Colt Steel one, like there was a lot of just side conversation of like, oh, when my parents got divorced and here's an anecdote about that. And I was like, cool, man, but tell me more about functions. I want to learn about functions. Um, but yeah, man, I, I think the the starting point is always weird because like I hear about people who go through this process now that are just starting. And I think they're doing a better job of it than I did, where they're like, I want to actually research like what technologies are out there and what type of languages I can learn and what career track that might provide for me versus me. I was just like, what's a popular coding thing? Like, how do I just get started? And I saw web de development. I was like, cool, I'm in, let's, let's go. Uh, there's so many things that I just learned about you. And um, it's funny if you replace very few of the details that you just said with like my own life, it, it would be mm -hmm. kind of, kind of the same. So <laughs> I was laughing when you mentioned the Coursera data analytics course, because I was actually taking that too. Mm. And um, no shade to like, you know, data analytics people. It is a good course, but man, it, for me, it was like a complete snoozer. I was, sure. I was taking that and I was like, this is just not interesting to me mm -hmm. at all. And uh, I could not stay on track with that course. It's a different kind of brain, right? Like, you know, I think you and I and a lot of the folks that do software engineering, like they want to solve problems. They want to be given a task and be like, this is the problem. This is the functionality we need you to build. Go build it. And you figure out your creative way you can do that with your tool set that you have. And then you have a project. The folks that are into data analytics, it's like, I want to understand why something is happening. I want to understand the trends that are going to help us make a decision that is more informed, right? So yeah, there's there's some similarities as far as like the coding elements go and working with a coding language but it's very different ways of thinking about problems yeah absolutely also um in college originally i was an electrical engineering major and mm. um we had a computer science course and they started me out learning uh c plus mm. plus and i was just i was completely lost <laughs> the end i don't even know how i passed that course to be honest um my yeah. grades were awful and i swore i was like i'm never coding again i absolutely <laughs> despise this this is awful ridiculous and i can't figure this out and you know here we are how yeah. many 10 years later it, it's super interesting going down this journey of learning how to code right and i you know i've, I've spoken to a number of people about this stuff and it's it's really your learning journey is so much more than just learning how to code. 
you learn so much more about yourself and the kind of person you are and like how you deal with self-doubt or imposter syndrome you find out how you learn things you you understand better like the kinds of formats in which you learn like some people are going to really love reading documents some people are going to really love the youtube style thing some people are going to really love doing code alongs and then doing their own challenges like there's a lot of ways to learn how to code and there's a lot of resources to do it and you know you stick with it and you just be patient with yourself you know you make that progress and you find out along the way way more about you as a person <laughs> yeah actually um so dirt when i was learning from code academy um their html and css portions are actually free on their website but those i was able to learn from very well um, i actually i really enjoyed um, their classes on html and css but once i got to javascript i was like i cannot learn mm. this this way um so i quit code academy and went through a few udemy courses and i was picking things up but it wasn't until i took Angela use course, mm -hmm. you know, the same one that you took, um, where I really just started to, to pick things up and, and started to understand things. And I don't know, for me, I can't read unless it's like really short things like, like documentation. I can't read a course and learn mm -hmm. how to code from that. I need, I need a lot of, of different examples. I like yeah. having somebody teach something to you and then you, use that information to solve like a problem super quickly, right? So like mm -hmm. five minutes of instruction, something to solve, five minutes of instruction. And that's what her course was like. Um, so I learned through that experience how I could learn code. And ever since I've been kind of like applying that. So you yeah. do learn a lot about yourself. Yeah, you get a good structure. Uh, I think the Angela U course is a really good entry point for folks that want to do web dev. Um, I will say there's a lot of extra stuff at the end right? Like when she gets in like web three technologies. And if you are just starting with that course and you get to the web three stuff, just stop. Like it's cool to learn web three technologies and stuff, but you're not there yet. If you're, if that's your first course you're taking, like there's already enough information about HTML and CSS and JavaScript and react in there too. Like it's just a lot of information. Um, but you said something that I want to talk about too, which is, you know, while you're learning how to code, you, you find, okay, I've got, I've got my method now of I find an instructor I connect with, they have video format stuff, we walk through it together and I'm able to apply those lessons now. And you have, a, you know, maybe the, the coding or the documentation or the, the documentation stuff isn't really sitting with you quite well yet, right? But also don't discount that stuff, right? Because that's the whole reason I started doing the, the documentation nation thing on YouTube mm -hmm. is because like I would when i'm building projects i would go through and if i was using a library or if i hit an error or something and i was trying to figure it out i might go to the documentation and try to reference some stuff and be like how do i solve this thing versus using you know other google searches or whatever but i noticed that i would just like find the one thing that answered my question and i would move on i'd be done with that documentation and i wasn't super thrilled about that because i keep hearing so much like learn how to read code and learn how to understand code, that's a skill in itself. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna just force myself to just sit down and go through documentation and read coding examples and fully digest what each line is doing and explain to myself what's going on and just force myself to get into that habit. And I've become a lot more comfortable with it. Like I was exactly your position, what you were saying before. Like I couldn't just go and read a thing about how to do coding and, and pick it up very easily. Yep. But at this stage now that I'm much more comfortable and I'm forcing myself to practice that skill, now I'm able to utilize those resources more effectively and they're more impactful for me and I understand them better. It's just a skill. And you're, you know, for the folks that might be watching this who are getting started in their journey and, and figuring themselves out too, like the way you learn this material might evolve and probably will evolve over time. So find the ways that you learn best right now and utilize those methods but don't discount other stuff that might not connect with you today because somewhere down the line, that might be something that works better for you or just an additional skill you can build um, and go back and, and retry some of those things. Yeah, and really great points. And that goes back to the idea of it like being a continuous process, right? You know, the software uh, software engineer a career, you know, it's mm -hmm. constant improvement. And um, in the beginning, when I was learning JavaScript, I was struggling so much and I just could not figure things out. And um, I guess my, my advice would be like, 
just don't give up. Sometimes it takes like for me, it, it, you know, to learn one concept, especially in the beginning, it took YouTube, it, you know, it's a course, right? I was going through the course, didn't understand it. Watched a YouTube video, second YouTube video, third YouTube video, fourth mm -hmm. YouTube video, you know, try to make a project, failed project, another project, didn't understand it. And then I tried to build another project and something just clicked. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, it makes sense now. And, you know, it's not like you're going to start and then you're going to learn how to code. It's just, mm -hmm. it's, it's just like, like, it can be a long process and yeah. it's different for, for everyone. So, you know, it, it's, it can be easy to get um, discouraged based on what you see online, especially like YouTube videos where people are like, you know, learn to code in three months or learn to code <laughs> in one month. And it like, for a lot of people, it does not work that way. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of, you know, struggle and, and trying to figure things out involved. Yeah, there's definitely talented people out there who can learn material very quickly and apply that material very quickly. But for the majority of us, that's not going to be the case, right? And I'm I'm kind of obsessed with this statistic right now, which is the 1% statistic, right? Where if you aim for a 1% improvement every day over the course of a year, that's 37 times better at the end of that year that you will be at that skill than when you started. 37 times, not 37%. That is a huge increase, right? For what, you know, and it's hard to say like, what is 1% improvement? I don't know. You know, that's not really the point of it. The point of it is like, don't aim for the biggest things that you can aim for and think like, I have to learn all of this material so quickly. Be realistic with yourself and, and your available time and your resources and just aim for those small, you know, incremental increases in whatever it is, even if it means you go back and you review something that you learned yesterday or last week because then you're improving in that skill and you're improving in that knowledge. And that's improvement, right? All that stuff adds up. I think um, we tend to get lost with how quick all this stuff moves in technology when there's like, oh, there's new frameworks coming out or this library is there and I hear about this thing. And everybody, and you, you know, you go and you look at job postings and there's so many different technologies that are listed and they're like, you need to have experience and this and this and this and this. So you sit there and you're like, I have to go learn all of this stuff as quickly as I can and like, man, that's not going to happen, right? Like you got to spend time and just dig into the technologies and really get comfortable with stuff and really fully understand what you're doing. And that's going to help you learn other things more effectively, right? But I, you know, you, you said like you were building projects and something just clicked, you know, like you had trouble with JavaScript and you were doing a project and then it just clicked. And I feel like, that, I feel like that's the experience that a lot of us have doing this. I had the exact same thing where I don't remember what project I was building but well, like I did, I did a project, my first full stack project after doing the Udemy courses is called charge buddy. And it's like a, a Google maps app with bootstrap. Right. And it was fun. And I put it together, I worked really hard on it. You just put in a, an address and it calls out to an API and brings back a list of, uh, electric vehicle charging stations in your area and maps them out. I'm like, cool. But I also had to use some like tutorials to help me get there. Right. And I understood it as I was doing it. I go back and look at it now and I'm like, this is trash. But anyway, um, I, I went to do another project after that. I was like, what's my next project going to be? How do I continue to learn stuff? And I sort of drawn out like a, uh, a design for, for an application. I was like, I can build this thing and it would, you know, solve a personal problem that I have. And then I sit down to start trying to code stuff out and I have an idea and drawing of what I want a component to look like. And I start trying to do it. And I'm just like, I, I studied and learned so hard about bootstrap in these, in these Udemy courses that I can't just from scratch and CSS build something the way I want it to look. And that was a big hit to like my like, yes, let's go momentum. And I was just like, I need to like take a step back and just really hone in on what this skill is. And that's how I, I eventually discovered front end mentor and started doing projects from there. Cause it's just like, here's a professionally designed project, go build it. Right. But like that doing that stuff, I was just like, okay, things just sort of clicking left and right. Every project that I do, I feel like there's something from that project that I'm like, I just get so much more of this material so much better now because I, you know, didn't follow along with something, building these things, just went through, did the work, hit problems, solved those problems, right? And learned from that experience. And then like, you just get that better understanding from doing that kind of work. Yeah, I think um, building projects is, is, is so important. And um, I think it's really important to build projects related to things that you actually care about because 
you know, if you look at um, tutorials and like, let's say you're following a video tutorial and they're making something that, you know, you're just not interested in. Mm -hmm. I find that it's easier to build, I mean, more difficult to build that thing. Like my first project that I ever built um, that helped me understand HTML was just like, HTML and CSS was uh, this static website that just listed out Star Wars characters. I mm -hmm. love Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And, you know, before that, I was having trouble. And I was like, you know what? I'm just I'm not going to follow a tutorial. I'm just going to apply what I uh, a little bit of what I learned. And it, it came out so much better than like if I were to you know follow a tutorial. So, you know, building, try to build some uh, some projects and um, try to make them about things that you care about. Mm -hmm. I find that um, also that it's important to to celebrate the small wins, right? Especially when you're in the when you're in the stage of of growing. I'm still growing, right? And you're you're seeing or you're trying to visualize what you want to do or or what you want to know or who you want to be. It, it can be discouraging, and it's always important to look back and say, "Wow." look what I can do now. I couldn't even think about doing this like two months ago. Mm -hmm. And that that's like, that's a really good way to measure your, your progress. You know, instead of saying, I want to know that I don't know that now think about where you came from and, and where you started. And that's why it's important to, and that's why I always talk about documenting your journey, whether it's mm -hmm. on like LinkedIn, Twitter, making YouTube videos or, or, or writing articles or anything like document your journey. And you'll be able to look back and see like, wow, I've learned so much since, you know, that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I, I remember seeing a bunch of your posts before we even connected and I was just like, who is this guy? And I, I saw you posting about like, one of your posts was like, I suck at coding. And I was like, yeah. this dude is raw and real and just like out there. And I was so impressed by that. And, you know, honestly, I didn't start doing the LinkedIn thing until sometime around I saw that post. I, I think it was like, I don't know. I remember I started being a little more serious about LinkedIn in like September or October, way later than I wish I did. But, you know, saw folks like you and other, and other people doing the learning and building out loud thing. And I was just like, man, it makes so much sense being public about it and being honest with yourself and showing the journey, right? Because like, you know, I put a post out a while back and, and a lot of posts I put up, I'm like, this is for me. I need my own reminders of this stuff. And you say like, celebrate the small wins. Remember where you came from, go back and look at some of that stuff and see how you grew, man, that is a huge deal. And it's super important. And it's also important not to pressure yourself to think you should know more than you do right now. Right. And don't pressure yourself to be the expert at this material and putting yourself out there is scary, right? Because like you were like, I'm going to record myself building something, or I'm going to explain my code that I built, you know, by myself and talk about it. And people are going to see how much I don't know. People are going to see that I'm a fraud and I can't really do this stuff. And it's like, well, you build a project and you made it work. Like you clearly can do this stuff. You're not going to be at an advanced level like a senior engineer who might be have, have been doing this for 20 years, but that's not the point, right? You're not trying to compare yourself to other people who have been on this journey for forever. You're comparing yourself to yourself from a month ago, from a week ago, from a day ago, right? And if you can identify that progress that you have made, Hopefully that helps all of us get over that like imposter syndrome feeling that we all feel a lot. And, you know, like you said, celebrate your success in this journey because it is a journey. And there's, you know, we all have the goal of like, let's get employed, right? Let's find a job doing this thing. That's the goal. But like your learning's not going to stop once you get there. If anything, it's going to just ramp up even more, right? When you start doing on the job stuff. So you're always going to be learning from people around you and taking more information in and you're always going to be growing in this career which i i think is one of the things that makes it so attractive right continuing continuing to improve yourself in some way and like keep looking back and celebrating your small wins and keep congratulating yourself at the progress that you've made especially on those hard days where you're like i don't get this material think about the material you didn't get before and how much more comfortable you are with it now. It's hard to do. It's really hard to do that stuff, but you got to make your reminders and, and do your best. Yeah, I, you really have to constantly remind yourself that it's a continuous process. It, it's not, um, where they say it's a marathon, it's not a sprint, right? And that's sort of like what I was doing with that specific post. Like I just came out and said, uh, 
you know what? Mm-hmm. I really just suck at coding. Um, but the point of that was to say like, it's okay to suck. Like I, mm-hmm. I was, I used the word suck, but you know, what I really, I really meant was like, not as good as I'd like to be. Sure. And when you first start anything, you're, you're not going to be great at it, right? You're, you're learning and improving yourself daily. And um, I think it's a really big mistake to try to present yourself as knowing more or being able to do more than you actually can, right? You have to be honest with yourself. And um, that's sort of what I wanted to do from day one, just be raw and real and talk about like, man, this project has got me stressed or Mm -hmm. I really can't figure this out. And I've noticed that people really resonate with that because not everybody talks about that, but that is, in my opinion, pretty much how everyone thinks, right? These are the things mm-hmm. that are going on in our heads throughout the process. And um, it's important to, to talk about that and represent that. Yeah. Because it's not just like easy. Yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely. And like, man, I love that point you just made of like, you're not trying to represent yourself as something different than what you are and what your knowledge is right now. And I think, you know, that is the huge hurdle that people have when trying to get into build in public or learn in public. Like I know me, like my background, my experience, I was in a company for 11 years. I was the person that everyone would go to with every single question that they had. And I would always have an answer or be able to figure out the answer, right? They're like starting a brand new thing and being the new person at it and like not having all the answers was a weird experience for me to be like, I just have to be honest and be humble and like know that I'm new at this stuff and know that I don't know. I think I did a good job so far on my education and where it's going and what I'm building and and how I work. But like, I don't know everything and I need to lean on people who know more than me. And, you know, even if you've only, I had a conversation with somebody earlier, really, really nice dude. He was like, he's like, I just graduated high school, but I've been doing engineering for a while. And, you know, my dad's a senior engineer. And I was like, cool, man, let's look at my project and let's walk through stuff and give me your feedback because I don't care if, you know, you're just graduated high school or if we've been doing this for 300 years, like you're going to know stuff that I don't know. And you're going to have good perspective on things and open yourself up to connecting with other people and getting feedback. It's challenging, but rewarding. And it's a, it's a big thing that's going to help advance your learning. Right now I'm working on a uh, project called quick save. And, um, you know, I keep hearing uh, the advice to build projects, uh, to solve a problem. Right. And, um, yeah, usually I don't document my entire day. So, I'm pretty sure it's filled with with problems that I could solve with code, but mm. I I just could not remember. So I was like, you know what? Um, I really enjoy video games, and uh, let's try to pick a problem that I could solve that I have with video games. And that turned out to be, um, I limit myself to buying one video game per month, and sometimes it's like a hard decision because I'm like, man, I want this one, but I want this one too. And I have like a whole list of video games that I want to buy, like six or seven. I'm like, man, I don't know how to choose. And usually what I do is I take screenshots from like store websites and then decide based on that. But um, I was getting bored and and tired of collecting screenshots of video games. So (laughs) I was like, you know what? (laughs) I'm just going to make a project that would like display video games um, based on an API. And what I would do is, um, you know, be able to search um, through like their database of video games and add them to a list and be able to add in, uh, you know, like the game details and prices. And then based on that, I can decide like what video game I want to buy. And it's been going um, really, really well. Um, I decided that I did not want to rush this Mm -hmm. because with me, I get very, very ambitious in the beginning. And I'm like, I want this feature. I want this feature. I want that feature. And I wanted to do this. Uh, This time I was like, you know what? I'm going to start with with one little building block and then we'll add in as we go. Um, And based on that, it's been going very, very smoothly. I Mm -hmm. find that each project that I build, um, it gets easier and easier to build those projects, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I... I like your note there about like not going as big as you can go on this thing, but it still sounds like, you know, you had features you wanted to implement and you're, you know, you're doing the skill of let me break those things down into like smaller, more manageable problems, right? As I build this application out. 
Um, what, you know, you're in process on this thing. We learn a bunch of stuff from the projects we're building as we go along. What are some of your biggest takeaways right now as you're, as you're mid build? Hmm. Um, so instead of thinking of like, what's an entire feature that I want to implement, I think about like what is involved in that feature, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll tackle it like one tiny, tiny step at a time. Um, so instead of like, let's say I wanted to submit a form, uh, you know, make a form that submits some sort of information to like a backend, you know, that's thinking too big. Instead, I'm like, um, what? what is a form? Like, what does a form do? What are the parts of a form? What do I want to include in this form? What do I want it to look like? You know, where do I want it? And then I've just been learning to, to take it a lot slower. Um, I've all, what I've also been doing is you know, I'm working with React right now and each, each new project that I'm making, I'm adding in like a different React feature. So, you know, this project I'm using React Router um, and you know, the more I learn and the more projects I do, it, it, I'm actually able to learn more. And then mm -hmm. that'll allow me to go back and make my uh, other projects a lot better because now I have that knowledge to um, to add in certain things. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned a lot of really cool things in there, man. Um, the first one will, the most, the last one you said was like doing one extra thing or something, some new feature every project which is a big deal and kind of harks back to the 1% thing we were talking about earlier, right? Where it's like, don't try to take on everything super quickly, go for those small improvements and things, right? Cause you're still learning a bunch as you do this project and you pick like one new thing to learn and you focus on it for a little bit before you move on to something else or add something new in. I think that's a, an awesome way to do it. And the other thing you said um, that I think is also super important is like that skill of breaking down a problem, right? where you know let's let's remind ourselves what software engineering is you are an engineer which means you take problems and you find a solution to that problem right using whatever your tool set is software engineering you're building code to solve problems right as a web developer your code is rendered in the browser cool we're solving problems that we necessarily haven't solved before and rather than like you said rather than saying like how do I send this form out to call an API endpoint and bring back data? You're like, okay, well, that's that's the big actual question we need to ask. But what are all the individual steps that are going to get me there? Rather than saying, I need to get from zero to 100. I need to get from not having a product to having things that calls an API and brings me back data. You're like, no, well, I need to have a form. Well, hold on. I need to have my first line in that form. Well, hold on. I need to be able to give data in that line in that form. How do I do that? first and then you build out those steps all the way down to where you want to get like that's a skill right that is a coding skill especially when you get into like leak code stuff man you have to do that kind of stuff you know you have to be able to break down problems into their smallest component that you can manage and then just kind of connect the dots of, of your solutions along the way and and get yourself to that final answer and like that stuff's important yeah it's it's important to not overwhelm yourself because you know <laughs> What I find is um, like, let's say I'm, I'm building something and I want to be over ambitious and do too much at once. What winds up happening is I start to get stressed and now I'm working with a stressed mind and the mm -hmm. stressed mind is not as efficient at writing code for me, at least as like a, a calm, chill, like cool mind. So I don't want to get to that point. So that's why I'm, uh, I'm taking it really slow. And also with this project planning has, has helped me a lot. Um, what I was doing before is just like, okay, I'm going to start like writing some stuff and then I'll figure it out along the way. Um, planning never goes exactly how I plan it. You know, things, uh, change a, a lot, but it's good to start off with like an idea and like write things out. Like I literally draw <laughs> really bad, but, and you could use Figma as well, but I just mm -hmm. start drawing things out and I'm like, okay, this is kind of like what I want it to look like. And this is kind of what I want this thing to do when I click on it. And just taking that extra time in the beginning has helped me avoid a lot of headaches. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, the prospect of coding your, your application is so exciting, right? You're like, oh, I've got this problem that I can solve and I can code now and I'm going to go build this thing and solve it. And like, 
it's super enticing to just jump right into writing code, but you can't because you know you have to do that preparation work. And the more preparation work you do to understand what you're trying to build, what the problems are going to be, how you might solve those problems, you know, those things matter and they save you a lot of time later on and they make your process of actually writing the code to solve those individual problems so much easier right um i definitely uh learned a new perspective recently from another engineer i was talking to the other day her name is sarah um we you know because i asked folks to look at my project right so uh if we're okay to transition to my stuff at this point unless you want to add more about about yours no please i'm sick of talking about me i want to <laughs> see what, what you got so, going on I have for the past few months, uh, I've been working on this Kanban task tracker, which I'm sick of it too, um, which is why I was like, I'm done with this now. Um, I wasn't doing like all day coding, you know, in the beginning, some days I did. And most days I was just doing like an hour or two, because then I started recording myself doing it. And then I have to edit those videos and put those up. So that was just more time, not spent coding, but doing all the work anyway. So I've been working on this project for like two months and you know, it's a, it's, it's like your, like, a, what is it? Trello, right? That's a Kanban task tracker. That's pretty popular. It's similar to that, yep. right? You, you, you've got boards and tasks and subtasks, and you can manage those tasks and move them to different categories, whatever. But it's a front end mentor project, right? One of their guru level projects. And I was like, hell yeah, I'm going to do this guru thing. Um, I, I got to the point where I was like, I'm done with it. And I just want to put it out there. Um, there's no persistence between sessions because I didn't use local storage and I didn't build a backend. I'm like, this is just, you know, an example of all my front end work. I can connect it to something at some point. Cool. I can still go back and do that. But here's the main functionality on the front end done and put a post up there. And I was like, hey, any engineers just want to come talk to me about this code and let's just, you know, rip me apart and teach me some stuff. And so far, everybody's been super cool. But the one piece of advice I got that I really like and will help me think about planning a little bit differently is when you're looking at you know maybe you have a design file or you have a problem that you're trying to solve and you know like you know in your case you've got a form you're going to send out somewhere you get an api you're going to have different display components and somehow they're going to interact right like in my case i've got a sidebar and then i've got my main display area for all the tasks and stuff and you know i said i said to her how do you go about thinking about how to like you know architect out an application before you really get into it and start doing the work like I made stuff work and I had a general idea of how I wanted things to do. But as I went along, I was like, I could have done this better. And of course you're going to learn through every project you do. But I was like, what can I do in the future to help me really solidify a better plan of action? And she said, look at your components, right? So in this example, we've got a side navigation bar and we've got our main display window. And we know that clicking on the board names in that side navigation bar displays the appropriate board in your window. She said, think about those components as having their individual teams. You've got one team that's going to work on your navigation bar, and you've got one team that's going to work on your actual display window that shows all the data. And write up instructions about how those two components are going to interact with each other, what data they need to pass around, but do it in a way that like allows you to manage those things separately. I have one team that knows their their priorities and their requirements, and they're going to work on this specific piece. And I have another team that's going to work on this specific piece and solve the problem that way. I think that's a super awesome way to think about it. And I'm definitely going to implement that on my next uh, project. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> it's super cool when like, you know, you, you kind of like know like what you should be doing, but having just having someone explain it to you in like a different way. And it's like, whoa, that's really cool. Like, I never really thought about it like that. Kind of like what you did for me. Um, I find that to be <laughs> pretty fascinating. Um, yeah, I think it's su super awesome that you're you're like building your projects and and uploading them to, to YouTube and mm -hmm. you know, displaying them on LinkedIn too. And I feel like so many people are like, um, are scared or worried and like, what are people going to think of me? I, I don't, I don't yeah. want to look stupid on the internet, um, but that is not what it's like at all. Even for mm. me, like I've been doing this for a while and I still get like, ooh, uh, I'm kind of nervous. But mm. most of the people, you know, like us, right, out there are like really just want to see you succeed and, and help, you know, as uh, as much as possible. Yeah. And um, yeah, you don't you, you don't look stupid. In fact, when I see somebody like working on something and maybe it's not like it doesn't look the best or the functionality isn't the best, but they like worked hard on it and they're showing it off. I get super stoked. I don't even care mm -hmm. what it is. I'm like, 
oh, that's awesome. Like, I'm so happy for you that you were able to figure that out. Yeah. So the fact that you're yeah. like showing yourself even in the building process, like I haven't even done that yet. I feel <laughs> like that's super awesome because you're like yeah. building it in front of us. And Thank um, you. yeah, there's that real it, potential to like mess up and be like, oh no, I don't want to look like that. Yeah. But, it, it was scary to start doing and I it was it, it came about because of a conversation on LinkedIn actually because I was thinking about and you know kept seeing like build in public learn in public build in public learn in public and I was like all right well what's the right method for me to do this the first thing I tried to do was live streaming on Twitch but as I was screen recording and live streaming it killed my internet so bad that when I ran into a problem that I needed to Google and try to look for something or a reminder on something I couldn't search anything so I was like this is not going to work because it kills my workflow so I was like that's out so then I was like, well, I guess I can just record myself because I wanted to talk to people through the process. And I was like, if I'm going to record myself, I guess I can just talk to the audience that's imaginary right now, my camera. But I was having a conversation with somebody on LinkedIn who was, they were upset about a lot of the videos they saw on YouTube because the problem they were saying was like, oh, you you see people that are like, we're going to build out, you know, whatever project we're going to, we're going to build out this to-do application, you know, standard, like code along tutorial, whatever. And they would code stuff like straight top to bottom, right? Like, and they'd be like, oh, we're going to import this and I'm going to write this function, but let's put this in now. And we know we're going to import this, this, this. And it's like, well, wait a second, hold on. That is not a linear train of thought necessarily because you're just copying a page that you have off screen and just rewriting stuff. And maybe you're explaining some of it, but it's not the realistic process, right? So they were like, why don't I see the realistic process on things? And I was like, well... I want to put myself out there and this is scary as hell, but sure, I'll just record myself doing the thing. And that'll be more realistic than having a pre-built project that's like a code along. And granted, you know, like a tutorial or a code along video is going to do a lot better on YouTube if you're looking for like views and stuff. But for me, I was just like, I just want the practice. I just want to talk about it. I want to get better at talking about my code. I want to get better at being comfortable, being public with it and putting myself out there. You know, it, and you were hundred percent right about the community response, you know, where it's just like, this just seems to be the most encouraging group of folks out there that I have encountered all trying to learn stuff and like just encouraging everybody to be their best and like stepping up to help and answer questions and like give time to have discussions on things. Like it's scary as hell to get started. But once you get started, when you actually start connecting with people, like you get a lot more comfortable with it because you're like, okay, I'm getting to know these people and they get to know me and they see what I'm about. And like, then I think you kind of are able to forgive yourself a little bit more of those mistakes or that, like, I don't know all this stuff because you start seeing that response of people being like, Hey, you're, you're doing really good. You know, you get that affirmation from people that you, we all really need when we're going through this process. Yeah. What was, what's actually funny is um, that was me complaining about those types of videos. I was like, um, was there's, yeah, <laughs> I was like, there's no way somebody wakes up in the morning and is like, you know what? I'm going to build Flappy Bird today. Like it just doesn't yeah. happen. Like you don't build these That's huge right. projects. It just wakes up right. one day and like, it's yeah. wild. It sets us, it sets such an unrealistic expectation. And like, granted, maybe if you've been doing this thing for 20 years and you're building a to-do app, yeah, you could just map that thing out real quick and, and get a, pro a, a project out there. But like when you're in the learning journey or when you're like still getting familiar with stuff, even when you're just building applications, even when you have experience, like you make mistakes, it happens. Right. And like, documenting that stuff and seeing that stuff live really i think that's why people are so scared about building in public right is because so many of the things that are, are public that they've been learning from are really polished produced examples right of like i built this thing yesterday or two days ago or over the course of a week now let's do it in one 25 minute video and it's going to seem so easy and like that's not reality Reality is, okay, I'm building a navigation bar today and I'm going to spend two hours doing this because I don't exactly know what I'm doing and I need to work on Flexbox and I need to figure out how to do this stuff in CSS or I need to understand how to make a hamburger menu disappear when I shrink my window and like you're doing stuff for the first time maybe and like that, that's the cool thing to put out there, right? Especially if, I mean, you know, one of the main benefits of putting yourself out there with learning and building in public is so that other people can see your progress right but also see how you handle adversity and challenges in your learning progress and also how you like figure it out right because that's the job the job is figuring it out 
you get hired to do a software engineering job, they're not going to expect you to be implementing code on day one, right? They're going to expect you to learn a code base, understand how that's working, and they're going to start giving you problems that you probably haven't seen before, and you're going to work either on your own or with a team, and your job is to figure that stuff out. Showing that you are capable of understanding your technology, working through a problem, however you choose to do that, use your resources effectively, like that's the stuff that matters in learning to code and showing you can code versus just saying like, okay, I build out this project and, and here you go, right? Yeah, that's why it's so important for people, you know, like you and, and, and what you're doing, this, like li these live coding videos is number one, it makes you look good and it shows that you're actually working hard and building things and improving. Um, but also it sort of builds this environment where it's saying, hey, it's okay to not be amazing and have these polished projects. Like it's okay. Like you could post that stuff in here. And that's what I was doing with um, QuickSave. And that's actually why I made those, those series of videos was because I'm like, you know what? I talk about building in public. I need to practice what I preach. And mm -hmm. I started off uh, the first video I shown, my project looked hideous and it was all kinds of messed up and the CSS was awful. And I'm like, I'm showing it off anyway. This is what I'm working on. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, somebody adding to that and doing their own thing, it, it helps to make that sort of environment where people just kind of feel safe and comfortable posting and talking mm -hmm. about what they're doing. And it's really important in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not doing it, get out there and start doing it and challenge yourself to start small, but find the ways you're comfortable in doing it and just keep at it. Um, yeah. So it, what is, what is next for you? What is next for me? Um, so I've been doing the documentation nation thing and got a, I've, recorded a couple more episodes of that that I have to edit and put up. I don't know what my next coding project's going to be since I've been doing the code with me stuff and trying to do that style video of just like, let's just start from scratch and figure this thing out together. I, I'm definitely interested in building a project and starting from day one doing those videos, right? Kanban kind of came up in between or toward the end of it because um, I'd love to be able to have people actually follow along and like hopefully learn from the stuff I'm doing. That's my intention with doing a lot of this too is like, how can I give back to the community? So some point soon, I'll figure out what my project's going to be and probably start doing that. I think I also want to get, try my hand at like explaining concepts in shorter form video. That's not like an hour long, right? It's just like, maybe I'll do a thing on function. So that I'm turning that around in my head. But um, yeah, man, it's, it's I'm, I'm in between projects while still doing the video thing and trying to figure out the ways to give back and be involved in this community. Awesome, about man. That's, you? That, that's great to hear. Um, yeah, so... I'm going to be doing a little bit more of what I've been doing. Um, I want to, you know, continue to make YouTube videos and also be very, be very helpful and and useful on LinkedIn and continue to make this sort of environment and community where everyone could, um, you know, just show up what they're doing and, and not really be scared. I really believe mm -hmm. that if I'm going to eventually ask my network for like a job or for some help, I need to upfront provide as much value as possible because mm -hmm. I don't believe in asking for things and providing nothing, you know? So I really enjoy helping people. And that's why I write articles, you know, make videos and, and talk a lot on LinkedIn. And um, I really just want to continue to provide as much value to others as possible. Mm. Um, yeah, man. besides, besides that, um, I want to finish this project and I really want to start applying for jobs. Uh, somebody told me <laughs> I, I was giving out my plan to, uh, to another engineer. And I was like, yeah, you know, I just want like one or two more projects on my por portfolio. And he was like, yeah, I'm really disappointed. Like you should have had a job three months ago. Like if you want to go ahead and keep building projects, that's fine. But I think you're ready to start applying for stuff. Um, so I'm going to start doing that too. It's good feedback, man. I've got like, I think 11 projects on my portfolio now. And I'm like, I think I'm good, but, <laughs> but I keep well, at it and keep proving myself, I guess. Uh, tell, tell people where they can find you, Matt. Yeah. So um, you can find me on uh, Medium, uh, YouTube and LinkedIn, Matthew Ehrlich. Uh, we'll link all of our, both of our links in the uh, description below. What about you? Uh, you can find me if you Google search Eric Wink Dev. Uh, my YouTube channel shows up. If you do uh, ericwink.dev, that's E-R-I-C-W-I-N-K dot D-E-V. That's my portfolio, which also links out to my socials on there. 
uh, join along with the videos and stuff. You, I know your your YouTube channel is great. You've got some awesome content on there. People are digging. I'm excited to see what you keep doing, man, and, and continuing these conversations with you. This is fun. Yeah, this was a great time. Um, yeah, my, my YouTube channel is basically like cutting out all the BS <laughs> of, <laughs> of the internet and just trying to be as real and authentic about the process as possible. But um, this was a great conversation, and um, I'm excited to do this again sometime in the future. Awesome, Matt. Thank you. All right. Well, I'll uh, I'll talk to you later. And uh, goodbye, everyone.